Scotland for two years. That's your Pacific Regional News from RNZ International. For more, check out our website, rnzi.com. Now with sports news, here's Vinnie Wiley. Thank you, Kuro Vanuatu. We're left ruining what could have been after another heavy loss at the World Cricket League 5 tournament in Jersey. The Melanesians were restricted to 204 for 7, batting first against Oman, with Nalan Nipiko scoring almost half their total, finishing on 9 not out from 108 balls, including 9 fours and 3 sixes. In reply, Zishan Maksud led the way with 130 not out, as the top-ranked Omanians cruised to their target with nine wickets and 56 balls to spare. But the president of Vanuatu cricket, Mark Stafford, says things could have been different if they'd taken their chances. We were very disappointed that we dropped the guy at made 130 in the second over and the third over. But, you know, catches in matches, if you had taken either one of those catches, the story could have been different, and you cannot say. Well, we had a couple of injuries with the uh, quick box and uh, hopefully I'll be back in action tomorrow and, and we'll uh, be able to uh, take care of Nigeria. Vanuatu lost their opening two matches against Guernsey and Jersey and need to beat Nigeria and Tanzania to make the third place playoff, from which the winner will retain their spot in Division 5. The New Zealand Samoan heavyweight boxer Joseph Parker will lose his mandatory IBF title bout. Uh, challenge if he fails to beat his next opponent, the Australian Solomon Halmono. Parker earned the right to beat Brit Anthony to fight Britain Anthony Joshua for the IBF title when he beat Carlos to come and an eliminate about in Auckland at the weekend. However, that mandatory challenge is unlikely to take place before the end of the year. The fight against Halmono will be in Christchurch in July. The Australian is the current WBA Pan Asian Boxing Association champion a title that Parker was stripped of last year after his camp refused to fight Halmono. He brings a different uh, game plan to what Takum had. He brings power, and, and power is, his power is dangerous. So it's, it's every fight that we have is a risky fight, but we have to be at our best. I think that the fighter that you underestimate or the fighter that you look past is the fighter that will get to you. Joseph Parker. The former Vanuatu Rugby League captain Justin O'Neill has been named as one of two debutants in the Queensland State of Origin team for next week's opening match against New South Wales in Sydney. The 25-year-old made his NRL debut in 2010 and has won premierships at both the Melbourne Storm and North Queensland Cowboys. Four years ago, he also turned out for Vanuatu in a historic test match against Greece. The other new face in the Maroons lineup is Brisbane Broncos winger Corey Oates. Tennis world number one Novak Djokovic and Serena Williams and the nine times champ Rafa Nadal have barely got their shoes dusty at the French Open. But two of the top five women's seeds have been knocked out, while Andy Murray survived the first round by the skin of his teeth. Djokovic, Williams and Nadal all won their first round matches in straight sets at Roland Garros. Uh, though the German third seed Angelique Kerber, four months after winning the Australian Open, was dumped out by Dutch woman Kiki Burtons. For the seed Victoria Azarenka, the former world number one had to retire hurt against Italy's Karen Knapp, while she was trailing full love in the deciding set. Menor Djokovic says that tennis at the Olympics should be treated like a fifth Grand Slam and have ranking points awarded. No agreement in place between the International Tennis Federation and the respective men's and women's tours, which means no points will be available for players competing for medals at the Games, which start in August. The American world number 17, John Isner, has already confirmed he'll skip the Olympics in Rio, citing the lack of ranking points as one of the factors. New Zealand's champion shot putter Valerie Adams believes Oceania deserves to host a world athletics meeting. The first Diamond League meet to be held in Africa was in Morocco earlier this week, with Adams winning her event. Afterwards, she included the IAAF boss Sebastian Coe in a tweet, suggesting that Oceania could host a Diamond League meeting. I love Morocco and I, and I think it's a great thing that, that Rabat is able to have the first Diamond League in Africa. I hopefully one day we're able to take her down to Oceania and have a Diamond League down there so we can spread it around amongst everybody around the world. Valerie Adams is next in action in Rome.